Добрый день, мы начинаем нашу сессию. Good afternoon. We start our session. We don't have much time, and I will not be talking too long. And I prefer to give the floor to our speakers. Our session is un unusual for this forum because usually we talk here about megalo policies and people present huge projects, and we like to talk about some large-scale stuff, about some, I don't know, crazy amount of square meters, the highest building ever, the tallest building ever, or the, you know, deepest tunnel ever. But, well, for the Marsh School for Marsh Lab, and for those of us who are here today, other projects are also in quite interesting. Probably the figures are not that high, but they, well, those projects are very precise, and that is what we like about them. Oh, well, they, they, because because of this precision, they always fit into the correct field. Probably, field is not the best word here, because well, we are talking about some creation of new, you know, life about uh, something new that appears and uh, grows and uh, continues living. I won't be telling you about that, though it's written in the agenda that I would, I would not. Uh, our speakers will tell you about various pro projects of various cities on dedicated to different topics, but they're all, uh, you know, what they have in common is this development um, effect. Uh, the first speaker today is Eugeny Ars. Uh, he's, I, I believe we don't need to introduce him. He's an architect and director of Moscow Architectural School, Marsh. Please, the floor is yours. Uh, can you please put on his presentation? Thank you very much. Thank you, Yelena. Thank you, Yelena. The idea of this session uh, was mine. Because, you know, when uh, the school march was invited to participate in the forum dedicated to mega projects, uh, my response was that we're not that much interested in mega projects, but we are mostly interested in the most influential projects that are not that voluminous. Uh, you know, the, the object of construction or design object is not that big, but the influence, the effect of it is quite crucial. The first project that we'd like to present is the one that we did uh, by, you know, um, within the contract with private investors. And I think that this is crucially important uh, that there are people who are interested in changing uh, landscapes of Russian cities. These people offer their investment. Uh, they invest in rather small projects, but they really get from those projects real improvement and quite, uh, well, big benefit. So the project I present is called Super Starica. So it is about city of Starica. It's a small town down there. Uh, you see Moscow. I don't know whether you can can see here uh, on the right bottom corner. You can see Moscow. Um, and well, the, within, inside this red circle, there is the town of Staritz. It's a small town of Tverskaya region, uh, which is located on a very important, you know, uh, crossing of two roads. It's historically very important. It's quite elevated. It's on Valdai Hill. It's on the bank of Volga River, not far from the uh, railway station, 65 kilometers to south from where it was found uh, it was founded um, well basically almost the same year when Moscow uh, in 2097 it was founded and many interested events uh, happened there it was once the capital of you know the uh, county the um, some emperors even lived there but the population was always quite small by well 500 and uh, 50 400 people like by the end of 19th century and well right now not so many people as well um, 
like a couple of dozens of thousands of people. The industrial picture there is quite depressing. Uh, tech mash, like agricultural production site called Rodina, and another one that is no longer working, the sewing factory. Um, so it's quite depressing. The level of life is quite low. There is no cultural life there with a lot of various problems, but there are a lot of historical buildings there. So how can we inspire, like inhale new life into this town? We can create some perspective for the future development of the city. To do so, we need to create or reorganize the touristic infrastructure there. With such a big number of places of interest, uh, there are quite uh, many people who are interested in visiting this town, but, well, there is almost no infrastructure there. I mean, well, to to tourist infrastructure. So uh, what do we suggest? I mean, what do our investors suggest? They bought an existing old building and they decided offered to uh, make a hotel from that building, which will be eventually the beginning of new touristic infrastructure. Right now, there are two hotels there uh, which uh, that cannot really cope with the expecting amount of tourists. A couple of pictures that prove the historical, that demonstrate the historical landscape the skyline, the market uh, place, the market building that will be transformed into a hotel. This is the photograph, pictured photograph, uh, beginning 20th century. The historical building I'm talking about, this is uh, its current state. So our goal was to transform this ruin within the contract with our respected colleagues. So we uh, wanted to create new hotel from this old building. So that's the project, basically. Uh, with quite modern, quite modern equipment was put into the project, but all the historical features were, of course, uh, conserved there. Uh, there are basically three buildings, and the legend says that Alexander I, the Tsar, uh, was once staying there on his way to Moscow. About 30 rooms will, uh, could be placed there, about 60 people uh, is, well, the uh, number of, of guests that could be staying there. Like, a small touristic center will be there, some centers of additional services, more or less modern hotel which will be put into entirely historical building uh, and we keep it uh, historical on purpose. This is what we would like to do. Uh, this building is a monument of you know, local importance. And that's why there are certain restrictions that related to transformation, but it's even better for us. We are we are keeping something that someone else would restore, like some ruins will still be there, which will demonstrate that this building has serious history and that will include it harmonically into historical landscape of the city. I won't tell you details about architecture. If you're interested, I will demonstrate you that later on. But we don't want to really uh, cover it with uh, paint. We want to uh, like leave it with bricks. Uh, we don't want to remake you know, the arches when uh, those are destroyed. So we, could, we are ready to do whatever it takes to preserve the original context of the historical building. Uh, the main goal of this historical reconstruction, from my point of view, is to is not only to provide you know, housing for tourists that come to the town, but also to you know underline the identity of this town. And I believe that this hotel will be will become the driver for new touristic development of this small town. The example of uh, the restaurant and the terrace of the restaurant. Reception uh, in a hall that's partially partly destroyed. We will not restore it like 
interesting space. The commercial gallery used to be there. We keep the gallery. Uh, the well dining room interior uh, interiors and well the living room interiors. So the whole idea is to the whole idea is to bring up the historical value. Uh, you know, frame it with uh, some good uh, building, and with that, bring new life to this historical town that right now, unfortunately, is in a very depressed state, and well, in in and there is nothing really happening there. That's the um, project that has been made by us architects. Uh, our like. Uh, investor is here. Uh, if you have some questions for them, they will be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you. We have a Q&A session scheduled for the end of the panel. Now we are shifting to the next projects uh, from the Tver region. We go to the South Urals. It is a bigger city with a different situation. Uh, with a working uh, monopolist factory enterprise. It's a lively city. It is a center between Chilabinsk and Ufa, a center of gravity for other settlements and towns around. And the city is developing quickly. Uh, we were expecting Natalia Nikiforova, who is uh, the chair of the uh, development uh, a fund for of this enterprise that is called Magnesit Group. Uh, how unfortunately she left uh, for another event, a Swiss uh, Culture Week, uh, visited by the ambassador, because this Satko Satko City uh, works uh, with uh, Swiss architects and the group uh, Rater, who Rater A represents and uh, has worked uh, during the last year on the renovation of industrial sites because uh, the um, the factory is downscaling and there are new plots of land that are freed and those are historical as in many other cities of the Urals and though the, it is in, in the center of the city. Next project, please. There is something wrong with the microphone. Could we please the technician come up? screen you can see the panoramic view of the city Satki, its historic part. Thank you very much for the introduction. Elena just uh, arrived uh, today from Switzerland and I'm glad to introduce that um, uh, project to you shortly. Uh, we worked hardly together with March um, on this project and it deals with the idea to use temporary structure to transform um, or reacti reactivate an industrial site, um, if this is possible or not, based on our knowledge uh, from Switzerland and Germany, which we would like to bring in. Thank you. So Satka has similar issues as Eugene just mentioned with the other city. It's a monotone city and it's somehow like... No, no. Do you, do you hear me now? 
Mm, okay. Um, it is a mono town with several issues, and we would like to, to analyze this city. What is the problem? How can we? Ah, it's an uh, interaction. Yeah? Sorry. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sadka, which is in the region of, oh, now it works, eh? in uh, Chelyabinsk, uh, approx 1,900 kilometers from Moscow, and we did an analysis, uh, what is the problem there, and how could we improve that? And we just wanted to know also what are the assets there, what is already there, which are actually the clients of the city. It's uh, not only visitors, it's only, of course, the locals. And how could we transform a specific site as a key site and uh, develop a project called CUT. This is the situation. We have a very nice quarry in the middle of the city, but it's obviously also um, separating two centers of the city, and we have an old factory site which is not used at the moment. What do we do with that? So you see it's like a, a barrier or two barriers. And, and a new center and an old town, very nice, and with some uh, dumps around it, obviously due to the excavation uh, being done. Now, the idea was to connect these two centers again and with a minimum of investment, minimum of activities, but with immediate effect. So we... Um, come to the conclusion that we could use that unused industrial site and um, connect these two centers and we identified two already existing nice buildings or areas which is called the cultural palace in the new center and the um, there's a square already existing in the old town. And with that, we somehow wanted to um, connect these two centers again with this old site, with this old city, with the old buildings, existing buildings, which we think are very valuable um, to reuse. And we identified that building, this industrial hall. Now, what we did is to analyze what needs to be done to somehow reactivate the toll for different events. And we identified several areas, what you can do with these areas. Entrance area with some landmarks so that you can see what's going on there. You could imagine that some modular or temporary buildings like containers or so. And then you have uh, tribunes, you have uh, stages, you have even in the back some gardening which you could use so that you can reactivate that site very easily with uh, temporary or module structures. Here you can see some examples how that could look like. Uh, with we think very minimum of, uh, of uh, investment, very minimum of, of uh, buildings, and uh, uh, obviously very fast. So we analyzed how could we use that site or that um, hall during the day. So this could be like sports activities. We could use it on weekends, um, knowing that there were already some, some uh, events planned. So just to implement some uh, new uh, infrastructure that you could use that on, on a regular basis. Of course, also uh, outdoor use now. It's summer, very nice. With some simple structures like a tribune, you can have really simple um, um, ideas of, of reusing that and give something back to the, to the uh, population from Sadka that they, they can experience um, that, in our opinion, nice city. And you can even plan some bigger events, maybe once a year, where you put additional structures, temporary structures for that specific um, event and attract people from uh, the surrounding. Now, the idea of having one first step uh, and connect these new centers would not end with just one measure. So we have identified other really nice spots where we could create or enhance that site and then connect all these together and have that approach on a longer term um, um, target list. So analyze the first catalyst site where we do immediate action and then connecting a few spots more and then 
connecting those even a little bit outside the area and even maybe then connecting the regions or other towns with obviously increasing of revitalization measures and investment. So after that uh, whole, we call it then lab, because you need to somehow um, uh, set new landmarks. Uh, we have identified other buildings, the grey houses or the quarry, as you can see here, very deep hole in the, in the ground, but very nice in our opinion, and the hill, these uh, man-made hills. And then said with some similar structures, you could somehow connect these different sites and have some kind of an impression that uh, it all uh, belongs together. So enhance those points and then put them together or connect them with existing uh, ways or streets and uh, create new um, new locations and call them differently. For instance, the hill with a very nice view there, you can see into the quarry or vice versa. The quarry itself could be uh, a place to be and connect all those together so that you can enhance the whole city with some really small measures. That was very fast, knowing that we don't have so much time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Reto. I can say that this project is now in on the preliminary stage. We have the conception and notion, and now the contractor is looking for the possibilities to fund the project on various stages. This is not a simple research. We believe it is a real project. In the autumn, we will hold a forum where will we be discussing problems of these kinds of cities and I think we will hear some news. And now we are changing the topic once again. We are now approaching uh, the megalopolis scale. Well, not a mega, mega city, it's a capital, the capital of Dagestan, Mahachkala, where uh, there is very fast growth but it's a chaotic on the spot. It lacks uh, a general idea. And we think that the workshop that took place uh, to design a specific building was very important. Uh, three kinds three, uh, of uh, activities were joined there, educational, academic, as well as a, uh, an architectural competition. One project was selected. Uh, of all the submissions, and thirdly, uh, a practical thing, because this project right now is already being realized. I would like to introduce Polina Filipova, who is uh, the president of the charity foundation the Magomedov, uh, that works uh, on the construction and creation of an educational center in Mahachkala. Yelena, thank you so much. Our uh, foundation, PERI, that was established by Mr. Magomedov, uh, uh, has many projects in Mahachkala. Our main focus is education and culture. And at some point, it became evident for us that Mahachkala needs new educational cultural center. And how should this center look like? What is a contemporary building for educational activities? It was an open question for us. And we found amazing partners, uh, Marsh, uh, Moscow Architecture School and Lab L Laboratory. We are very grateful to them for holding and organizing an international workshop. And I would like to tell you briefly what were the outcomes of this, of this workshop. First of all, it took place in Mahachkala, in a city that grows very quickly and actively. It's second place in construction under Moscow, more than 500,000 uh, residents. Uh, but uh, most of the people who now live in Mahachkala uh, are the first generation of the city residents. Uh, a very dense, intense construction without any uh, clear plan. Uh, sometimes you cannot even you know, the, see the lines of the cities because the construction is chaotic. And in the city, with a great num numbers of youth, well, there are in uh, educational institutions, but there are no contemporary up uh, education opportunities. Uh, there was a short survey done 
the majority of population are unsatisfied with education. They would like to receive extra educational opportunities. For us, it was a challenge. Our foundation has been working in Mahachkala for a long time. We taught um, more than 7,000 people. And we had to create, we needed to create an accessible place, an attractive place for the youth. And it, uh, we heard it today already from Yevgeny Viktorovich, a place that will become the driver of change in the city. Uh, as well in, you know, in the per in terms of perception of education in Mahajkala. Uh, we could choose from many approaches, uh, for, for example, invite a well-known uh, bureau or to open a competition, a tender. But since we are a charity foundation uh, whose clients are youth and education, we decided that it is necessary uh, to somehow unite all these elements and we came up with a new format, uh, educational workshop on the one hand and on the other at the same time it was a real-time designing of architectural uh, con notions and conceptions one of them later to be chosen and approved we received a hundred applications selected 25 young architects younger than 30 years and uh, from LA to Vietnam and Bangladesh and they were joined by five Mahachkala young architects. During 12 days, they were working very intensively. We had tutors, uh, very interesting experts who worked with the groups. But it is also very important that the city was actively engaged in all these activities. As I have already said, it was not easy, you know, real designing. It was not mere educational activity, it was a public event, a very significant one. Real designing, real design was carried out thanks to the fact that dozens of professionals researched uh, and investigated Mahachkala, its architectural traditions, its approaches to education, but as well it was really crucial for us that the city was um, a was a, an equal participant. We held open lectures, lectures, open discussions that we, to be honest, feared in the beginning because often people who know that their uh, living environment is going to change very aggressively, uh, they are resistant to this kind of change. But we were greatly supported by the local uh, uh, by the local people when they even joined the workshop. They were participants. We have gathered a very uh, you know, loud jury, international jury, well-renowned well international architects. Some of them are even here. Yevgeny was uh, one of the uh, jury members. And as well, there was education professionals. Because the question uh, about what uh, does a contemporary hub of education need to be you know, a place of change, to be a place of attraction. This question is being discussed in all, all over the world, and there is no universal question to it. We, I would like to show you what were the results of our effort. Uh, the winning uh, submission was uh, Petty Innovation Scepter Notion, uh, developed uh, by three young architects. I will try to show you them. No, unfortunately, I don't have their photos. Those were three architects from Russia, Anna Petrova, Patricia Urlan from Romania, and Geoffrey from LA. I forgot his uh, family name. The tutor was Hiroki, Hiroki Matsuro, an architect from Japan who lives now in Rotterdam. We were very focused on the place, on the site for the construction, because the plot itself is uh, is a challenge in a way, because this is a residential area in the, in midtown near the central square, in the vicinity of the historic building house of Rasul Gamzatov, a very popular park. Uh, but, well, it's a residential street, and thus building there a big center on a narrow, uh, on, uh, with, you see it in yellow, on this narrow plot of land was not easy. Our participants paid great attention to the historic tradition. You can now see on the picture to the left, uh, 
Perry, this is uh, the building, and to the right, this is the, do the house of uh, Gamzatov, a historic mansion. We needed to keep up with the proportions, however, the ambitions are great because we want this uh, building to be a new place of very active life, cultural life. After the competition, uh, you can see a mock-up, a model of the building. The decision was made that this place will not only be, you know, a cool place uh, divided into very clear, closed spaces. We will have those, but first of all, the approach is to make a unified place uh, un uh, that can be used as an exhibition hall, for example. Another uh, concern was to uh, keep up with the traditions of uh, of Dagestan architecture using uh, you know, local stone. And now we are on the stage of approvals, uh, documentation approvals uh, after a tender uh, for uh, finishing of architectural and uh, construction documents. We have hope that in September 2017, our center perimeter, Peri, will be inaugurated. So this is the speed of the development in Mahachkala. Quite impressive. And uh, now we are going back to a small city, microtown, that uh, demonstrates uh, quite an interesting architectural story for a long period of time. It's the city of Krapivno. And I give the floor to Madame uh, Kravchina. D development director of Jasnaya Poliana Museum. Uh, so we've seen good examples of like very fast paces of the development in some cities. And right now I will tell you about the small town uh, well, a few kilometers away from the Jasnaya Paliana Museum, which is very closely related to the life of Leo Tolstoy. It's a unique area, conservation area that is located in a very clean, you know, in a very clean region. There is nothing like unique about its architecture. The older buildings are quite, uh, well, Harmonic, harmonically built, this single or two stories building. Well, uh, Krapivnik has a very sad destiny. Uh, it was abandoned and it became like a, a village during Soviet time. Right now, it's also considered to be a village. And well, only, you know, those who lived there because of the museum called this small village a town. The problem of the is that the historically the environment is like uh, of a town, but the mentality of the people who live there is of villagers. Krapivno is closely related to the life and social activities of Leo Tolstoy. He was a member and the head of the like local board, you know, council, and this he was very active there. Though there is nothing, uh, that not, there is not much known about that. Uh, and when tourists come to Jasno Paliana, we really don't have enough time to tell them about this part of Leo Tolstoy's work. And we had the strategic idea to make this Krapivna available for tourists as well, for them to learn about Tolstoy, about this period of, you know, um, this part of history of, you know, administration of Russia, the Russian province, right? And when in 1924, the grandchild of Leo Tolstoy became a member of the administration. He came there with the strategic development uh, of, the, of with the strategic idea of development of Tolstoy's area. Though we're not really advertising ourselves, the really more and more tourists are coming and we can't really cope with them all. And in order to you know, to be able to fit them all, uh, we had a plan to cover this Krapivna as well. Speaking about the projects that uh, initiate certain changes, uh, they could be different, like many of them. For example, 
uh, one of them was an annual festival of nettle. Um, it's also this well, this nettle uh, plant is also depicted into you know the. Um, it's one of the symbols of the city. It's put on an emblem, the court of arms of the city. This festival happened this year for the 14th time. It's very popular and, well, uh, it became a region and quite a well-known holiday, which is financed from the regional budget already. Initially, it was planned to become, uh, you know, uh, one of the instruments to to give new life to this build, to this town. We always um, invite new partners, our foreign partners. Another thing that we did, we made a series of, you know, charity evenings with our friends, uh, with well, with the friends of our museum, with partners. Uh, one of them, a um, couple of agencies, Pricewaterhouse Coopers and the Ernst and Young. We gather charity f uh, funds in Moscow. We spend very good time there, but it turned out to be quite an expensive way to work. And we won the European Union grant. It was an international project that was called Krapivna, the uh, you know, star of a Russian province. We were cooperating very closely with Turingi. Uh, that was another very important for us project that helped us to promote our ideas and to move, uh, you know, on a different uh, professional level of our work. Uh, within this grant program, with very small amount of money, we managed to realize a very serious and profound research, architectural research of the city. We found the most important buildings. The red color uh, stands for the buildings visited by Tolstoy. Uh, well, the violet is like a former industrial zone that dissonates with the whole town. So, in Krapivno, we have a lot of problems that are relevant for all the other small towns of Russia. Karpivna is a very small town. There are 950 people, including like babies, newborns, and old people. And well, there is no, there are no resources for independent development, or at least there are minimum minimal resources. This project. Uh, helped us to make friends with the Architectural Society. We visited Germany, we visited Bauhaus University. Uh, we went through more than 30 villages and small towns of Turingi that by 2008, 2009, went through this federal program. Uh, like The mayors of the towns tells us, told us about their experience, about how complicated it was, how complicated was the dialogue with the owners of building, how complicated were the changes, and we were we really envied them at every village because, well, these people succeeded. The first thing that every mayor showed us was the general plan, the master plan of the development of this uh, town or village. At that period of time, we didn't have any, you know, any even idea of that. And we started dreaming about that master plan. Uh, we had a lot of exchanges, mutual visits. We even uh, made, you know, a festival exchange, the Nonian Festival and Nettle Festival. That might be funny for you, but for those who live in a small provincial towns, this is a chance to feel that feel themselves as an important part of, you know, of the whole big world. With the help of architectures, we managed to create an well, unusual for us workshop format, uh, one of the methodologies of, of working with the population, uh, like demonstration of local craftsmanship, and etc. Uh, this really helped us to create the link with local citizens, with deputies and active people there. That's how we started the experience of other towns, other villages within the program of preservation of historical uh, towns. We also uh, created a student exchange, Morhi Bauhaus, uh, under you know the control of Lydia Shitova. Uh, we managed to organize this exchange. Students came for two weeks to visit us. We, our students went there. And well, uh, after that, as a follow-up, we managed to do couple of other like serious projects. In 2010, uh, we uh, 
get acquainted with Evgeny As, with his laboratory, uh, and well, uh, we um, started the project Krapivna 2010 Sunday. That project is well known. It is presented in well. Uh, in various shows in Moscow and the upcoming project. We are now coming to the third stage because we don't have full documentation package in all that is required to apply for big investment. We asked for help in the uh, Architectural Society, very good project what, that was called ideas for a provincial town. Uh, the idea was to gather as many ideas of the transformation of the environment for the provincial city as possible. Uh, like former uh, Evgeny Viktorovich students also participate, participated in that project. And we found out that there is a lack of knowledge about preserving monuments, about future development of this town. So the local administrative people, they don't have enough, you know, management uh, skills. And well, within this pro project, we created like some components for future uh, programs. Um, for example, like medicine for a house. Uh, we got a private investor who uh, takes this year an empty building for a small hotel. So all of these projects are example of uh, our efforts to attract, you know, the lacking competences to our town. The closest architect is in the district center, like dozens of kilometers from us, and he never visits, and all the, you know, permissions he gives without seeing uh, any building. Sorry, I need to stop you right now, okay? But we still hope that our professional architectural society will support us. If anyone is interested, well, it is interesting indeed. Uh, it's been on the scene for many years already, for more than 10 years already. And I believe that this could be a topic for a separate conference, even the, I mean, the small cities, towns or villages. We will invite you for sure if there is such conference. There are obviously two deficits. One of them is competences, uh, the deficit of competences and the def deficit of money. For me, one of the most important factor is the subsidiary program for these projects, subsidiaries from private sources. And I believe this is a good thing. Well, it's very good when the state is actually giving money for something, but on the other hand, well, we, we understand that private investment is a testimony to the real interest of people who are spending this money. I mean, we can say that this is target money that is spent on a right purpose, that there is control mechanism, that we control what is happening. And well, it, it's totally different thing. Uh, it's very different from the state budgeting, right? Because private budgeting is very transparent uh, because of the people who give this money. And we would like, I would like to thank these people for their consciousness because without their initiatives, I guess there won't be any development at all. And the second question uh, related to all of these cases is the accessibility. For example, the city of Sadko, a very interesting and developing city, it's just not really ac accessible. It's very difficult to get there. Starit is also very hard to get, but well, the question, my question is following. We're now thinking like about these ancient buildings, but we don't really understand who actually visits these places. I guess that it's better to ask, uh, you know, those people who are paying for this. If you have a look at touristic websites, for example, Staritsa, you see that there is very huge forum everywhere, and the number of visitors grows annually. And well, as for example, some uh, 
people who come to visit monasteries. They are a huge number of lovers of Russian history, right? And the idea of the creation of the hotel is uh, related to, you know, the real interest of people in this place. Um, about the roads, well, I understand that our, our well, people with whom we work, our partners do not have money to pay for the roads, like from Moscow to there. There are longer roads, obviously. There are shorter roads, but these roads are very bad. But this is true, authentic Russian road. Uh, brief comment. I am against thinking all all the time about tourists because, because people because you know we build for ourselves, not for loiterers. You know, not for tourists. They are for the city residents. Uh, they should be convenient and comfortable. You know. Tver is the 500,000 people who need to spend their weekends somewhere. Let's think outside, you know, Moscow. Let's think about the people who live there in Krapivna. The, the, you know, Sadka, the same goes for Sadka. They will uh, go to study. It will be a difficult road for them. We are not talking only about the Muscovites in Sadka. It's one of the main problems. It becomes a regional center. However, the ambitions are are even bigger than that. Mahachkala is a completely different story because there are, there are many, many people living who are not engaged in this cultural or educational process. Are there any questions from the audience, any comments? Well, I would like to make a short comment. Well, the roads on the seventh or the eighth year of the festival that we held, our governor uh, built a road to Krapivna. Uh, we needed only 10 kilometers, and we, it was, you know, it is a road of great quality. After seven years, it's still intact. It's still not broken. So the festival helped to, you know, pave the way. Uh, we're talking about roads. We've been discussing the work uh, during the workshop. We were discussing for a long time the fact that there are no bicycle tracks in Mahachkala. However, we want to to make a ve velo parking lot, and those projects need to, you know, work. Uh, need to inspire people. Need to show them new things. So there are no bicycle tracks, but if we make a parking lot for bicycles, there are more ch chances that there will be bicycle tracks. That's our hope. Well, uh, the mentality of the people, uh, it's very different. In Satka, for example, uh, Reta shown the map. Uh, we have the new town and the old town. They uh, are divided by the quarry. It's uh, about, you know, four kilometers from one center to the second to the other. But four kilometers for the locals is a great distance. It means that the residents of the old town and of the new center hardly ever meet with each other. It's very strange. And when we tell them you can walk there, they say, no, you can't. Because this distance, uh, uh, more than 15 minutes of walking, it's too far for them. And these uh, minor details are very problematic for people when you, well, when you work with real designing. Uh, for Tolstoy regions, residents uh, ask, well, when are we going to have uh, the city museum? Uh, well, that's problematic as well. Our strategy at Marsh Lab uh, aims to engage the local residents, the local people who will be using these changes. And the Mahachkala workshop, as Polina said as well, I was flabbergasted by the fact that uh, this old intelligentsia from the Soviet time is still there, people with great education, with proud interests and many young people also gathered at our workshop uh, with you know high demands and the city the city did help our students 
you know, they would tell us about the climate, about the specificities, and uh, they played the role of experts there, and it was very inspiring. I didn't see this, you know, desire to uh, just use what we are doing. No, they see the deficit of opportunities to apply the energy and the strength. As you see, uh, our youth are very energetic, very vital. They uh, like uh, fighting sports a lot. But, well, they also strive for intellectual achievement. And in Sadka, we, in the end of June, we will be holding a practicum workshop uh, of about several objects for upgrading of the city. Uh, well, it, it's done mostly on the local level. Well, the, our effort was aimed uh, for at engaging the local audience. There are a number of examples of you know architectural or museum projects becoming a center of. Uh, of a certain region or a territory, there are examples of that. Well, the uh, territory is so big, um, but we and I hope that this and it is a, it's a different topic about you know how one event, one project can uh, become a catalyzer, driver of change, uh, including in the life of the city. And I think here the key condition is to engage the local audience, the local community to engage it not only as the receiver, but as an active participant, as decision makers. I would like to say that engaging, yes, it is uh, important, but it is also important to, inter to be interesting for architects and for the local authorities in such projects. I mean, many projects uh, connected with Marsh School or Marsh Lab there are many of them, and it means that there is a strategic line that we are building in our school. For example, we ha we have the luxury to make uh, m uh, master's uh, diploma projects dedicated to very, very small objects and sites. For example, one of our uh, diploma graduates, a very successful uh, work was, you see, uh, unauthorized uh, construction of a minor cultural center in a garage cooperative in Yekaterinburg. We think that such initiatives that come both from architects and the residents might end up revolutionizing drivers of new development of the territory. Unfortunately, it is time for us to leave the room. However, I would like to tell Reto that as we see, those projects are not limited by, you know, local activists of Russia. We, we use international experience, and I would like to ask to what extent for international expert, it is interesting to work here and how relevant, we understand the situation is different, but how relevant, uh, this, how relevant is the situation of the Russian cities uh, for, you know, Swiss cities? What problems of the Russian cities you believe to be important? It was a very, um, very interesting experience which we have um, had with the, the population of the city uh, as well as with, with March. Because for us, obviously, the city were, were um, developed during a very long time in Switzerland and in Europe. Whereas sometimes in, uh, in Russia, for instance, cities are grown very fast due to, um, for instance, an industry. 
and then something changes immediately. And there you have the chance uh, for us as a European architect to bring in some experience which we had also during this long um, transition, for instance, from cities, um, to bring in immediately also to, to, to uh, Russia uh, cities, such as Sadka, for instance. And what we have experienced there is that there is a lot of potential uh, still available, but not to bring in like uh, from outside a view which then is not convenient uh, for the population. So to engage uh, people directly, this was a new experience for, for us. Uh, as normal, we plan something and then see what happens. And, and uh, there we would imagine that we could initiate immediately something which you said is a cat could be a catalyst for the city and we call that um, a project cut catalyst for urban transformation. So do something immediately for the population. Maybe see what happens, maybe it doesn't work, change it again and do something else. And we were used to, to plan on a long term, like 20 years period, but we know what can happen within 20 years, um, just knowing what, what technical uh, equipment could, could, could develop. So for us, it's a very good experience. And also to bring that back to our thinking to maybe to Europe, not to, to plan on a long term period, but to be quite fast. Uh, thank you so much. I thank all the participants and all the um, people who are present in the room. Unfortunately, we don't have any time for Q&A anymore. And we will probably do it later in some other place and discuss each of the cases in more details. I invite everyone who is interested, who have ideas or suggestions, I invite you I invite you to to approach me. I will be very happy to be in contact with you. Thank you so much for being here.